Hello everyone. It didn't go unnoticed by me or other people who commented on one of the videos that I'd forgotten to do the bridge mode test or example on this three branded or provided uh, ZTE MC801A router. So the idea of bridge mode uh, and you may not really need it for this route because this route is actually fairly capable. I don't know how good it is under heavy load of multiple computers on a network or LAN uh, and NAT, but uh, bridge mode would allow you to bridge it to your own router. So uh, there's not very much really between the functionality of this router and, and that one. But if you've got something like a FortiGate or a Cisco router or something that you wanted to have the WAN IP address, directly on instead of double natting or um, similar out of this then this bridge mode is what you need. So on the back of this I have my computer plugged into port number one for the LAN and that's the only thing I've got plugged in. I've got my SIM card in the slot underneath and there is the router. On the computer we should see that I have a standard LAN IP address to this router. So if I take that IP address of 0.1, we get into the web interface of the ZTE 5G router. If you want a full video on every single page in this web interface, then look at the description of this video. There is a load of other videos I've made about this 3 5G router, uh, including one which has every single web interface uh, admin page. Uh, if there's also any mistakes in this video or updates, that, that will be in the video description as well. So do take a look there because there might be some updates. So up here where it's got current mode, it says wireless broadband mode. You cannot change it unless you turn off the uh, connectivity on the WAN or the, the 5G or 4G side. Um, what you're seeing here is I do not have 5G coverage, so don't take my speed tests here as golden for what performance you should get. I don't get very good coverage, so the speeds I get are generally quite poor, somewhere between uh, 15 and maybe 40 megabits per second if I'm lucky. And there we go, that's the performance I get. Uh, so we switch off the WAN and it will disconnect. We need to click on where it's got current mode, change that and go to bridged mode and then click on apply. The moment you click on apply, this router will reboot. So you'll see over here, all these lights will go out and the, the router will reboot. So if we do IP config, it'll probably say, oh, it doesn't say I'm disconnected yet. But uh, there we go, media state disconnected and uh, the router will reboot. So we'll come back in a minute or so when that's rebooted. I will cut this section out of the video. So if it looks like mine boots up much quicker than yours does, I've cut out the reboot. OK, the router's finished starting up. If I now do IP config, apparently it hasn't yet brought up the LAN interfaces. But uh, keep an eye on that. It must have brought it up now, but I haven't yet been given an IP address. And it's disconnected me again. And there we go. I have a WAN IP address directly onto my computer. So 188.28.40.153. If I now go to a website which shows your IP address, that is what I'm getting and what I've been given. The other thing that's quite interesting as well is while you're in this mode, you still can access the 192.168.0.1 IP address of the ZTE modem. Um, so you can still at least log in and see the signal status. You could also, if you needed to change it back to routing mode, you can change it back there. Um, and what's also I found quite interesting, if you go to detailed information, is 
the ZTE router or modem, even in uh, bridged or modem only mode, shows or knows what WAN IP address uh, you have. So I wonder if this is doing some kind of half bridge um, where this device actually has the IP address but still passes all of the, the stuff through um, or something interesting. So I'm now going to shuffle it around and make our own router as the main WAN router, which is how you'd normally have it unless you needed an IP address directly on your computer. So let's plug this in. This is a Xyxl DX5401-B0 router, which is just a bog standard Ethernet and VDSL router, so we've got uh, VDSL over here, VoIP, LAN and WAN, but also has an SFP cage for doing uh, full fiber broadband. Let's see whether we can get both of these into the shot. I will also need another network cable, get to one of those. I'm going to plug that into the LAN of the XYXL Ethernet router and on my laptop I will unplug the 3 modem in bridge mode and I'm going to plug the XYXL into the laptop and what we'll see over on the laptop now is I should get another 192.168 LAN IP address, which I now have, but I won't have any internet access because over here, this connection is not plugged into the uh, Xyxl router. So I'm going to rotate that around, plug that into the blue uh, WAN port, and these two lights here to do with the uh, physical connection and then the uh, IP address or logical connection should come on. And over on the computer we should see that it will start being able to ping the internet. And there we go. So that is traffic now going through to the LAN of my third party router and then going through in uh, bridge mode or modem only mode on this 5G 3 router. Because the LAN address of my uh, XYXL is not in the same range as, as this one, so this one is 192.168.0.1, uh, sorry, .1.1, and this one is 192.168.0.1, I will still be able to get to the ZTE's web interface. If your router that you're using happens to be in 192.168.0.1, you will not be able to go through your router to the 3 router to get to the ZTE web interface. Um, you would need to be on different IP ranges uh, for the two different routers for that to still work. If I log into my XYXL router, and go to system info, we should see 188.28.140.153, which was the IP address that my computer had previously um, bridged across. And that's really all we have to do. This thing is in bridge mode. You're using your own router, so your own Cisco, your own uh, FortiGate, your own Firebox or Firebrick or um, all the other types of routers you can get. Um, so if you've got a router which does VPN hosting or some other fancy stuff, then this is very, very useful. One thing to say that if you are using the ZTE 5G router with any other provider in the UK which is not 3, then you will not be given a WAN IP address here uh, or a public IP address. Most other providers in the UK and probably most of the mobile networks in the world um, use something called carrier grade NAT where uh, you will be sharing a public IP address with tens, if not hundreds, 
of other uh, customers of the mobile network. Um, and you are given an internal IP address on the mobile side, uh, and you will never be given a full public IP address. It's very unusual for the mobile network in the UK called Three, um, where they give out a public IP address to customers who have the correct APN name set on their routers or their phones. But a fantastic service, and I hope they carry on um, because there is a market out there for people who want a public IP address on a mobile connection. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. The video notifications don't need to be switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much. And just to finish off the video, we'll flip it back into routing mode. Uh, so let's log back into the ZTE. We need to disconnect the WAN side. And it will be interesting to see while well, that WAN side is disconnected, uh, what IP address this router is given. Now, I presume it's going to drop this 188.28 IP and go back to having a, uh, a standard 192 IP address, which it has done. So you will only get the bridged IP address while you're fully connected to the, um, the mobile side. It'd be interesting as well if you're moving around with this router and you lose mobile signal, do you, does your router here suddenly drop to having an internal IP address until you regain signal and then, um, then it comes back and maybe moves back to the WAN IP address. So changing from bridge mode to wireless broadband mode. And like last time when putting it into bridge mode, this router restarts. There we go. Hopefully that's been helpful. Thank you very much for watching.